Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of autopilot version 8.1-2018-4.73 EE0F17. So, just doing the standard loop that we always do, uh, just going in, this is the first version that I've gotten since 50.3, which was the one that add, added beta wipers. I know other people have probably gotten newer versions than this, I'm just going to go ahead and enter the same loop at the same speed that we always do. If you saw the previous video, you noticed that we got some pretty interesting results with 50.3. I actually did go back and retest 50.3 a few times, and got uh, much better results where it didn't actually change lanes into the center lane. Um, here it's actually doing a pretty good job. I also had the opportunity to highway test this one since I had this one done at the dealership while I was having my 17 inch LCD screen replaced because I got the yellow coffee ring around it. It did really well on those two. It, um, if it touched the lane line at all, it was just barely. Didn't really drift in either direction. I'd say that's an improvement over the 50.3 version that I had. I didn't have any of the other 2018 4 versions yet. So I don't have any basis of comparison for those. I know that some additional features were added, like the um, cold weather package memory. So remembering some of the features like, um, actually I guess it's not specific to cold weather, but uh, remembering seat heater and uh, steering wheel and defroster settings so that you can turn them on remotely via the mobile app, which is really handy for those of us who live in chillier climates, as you can probably infer that I do. Um, let's go ahead and just do the standard loop for the rest. But yeah, as I was saying, in the rest of the 50, in the 50.3 retests that I did, I got much better results. Still wasn't perfect, but um, I would say that so far this version definitely seems to be an improvement. The big one that I'm always really curious about here, we're behind a truck, and no, it does not read it as a truck. So we got to go ahead and confirm that one right quick. I'm guessing motorcycles will be the same thing. Um, still does not see cars in adjacent lanes on the radar display unless you are changing lanes. As soon as you initiate a lane change, it'll show you cars in the lane that you're changing into. And in some cases, I've even seen it show cars in the lane that you are uh, moving away from, the one that is in the opposite direction of the one that you were changing into, which is interesting. So I'll go ahead and hang my right here. I'll get back into the center lane. We've got a few cars in front of us, but I think we're still are clear enough for a pretty decent test here. Bump it up to 35. We'll see how it does. Oops. Oh, interesting. Okay. Good on ya. I'll see how it does in this lane merge. Centers it out itself out nicely. Hopefully the uh, tracks won't trigger a G-force event on my dash cam, which is something I always have to edit around, which is really annoying. Put up to 40, which is actually where it's capping me. All right, so I'll put it five over the speed limit, as is how people commonly drive in the US. And looking good so far. We're coming up on the tricky section here shortly. The real test that I'm gonna be most curious about is how it does detecting stopped objects, because that's just, that's not something I've ever seen a particularly good result on um, Autopilot 2.0 hardware. It was pretty good on my 1.0 hardware car. All right, come on, come on, come on. There you go. Okay, no intervention, didn't touch the wheel. Ah, yeah, 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 what are you doing? All right, no intervention, didn't touch the wheel. Um, it looked like it was gonna react a little bit late, but it, it got it in time. But yeah, as I was saying, um, Autopilot 2.0 cars, never seen them do a particularly consistently good job at detecting stopped vehicles. And once we get to touch the wheel, because it's a little weird section. Unfortunately, we're coming up behind a slowing vehicle, so, you know, it always does a pretty good job at that. I'm not too concerned on that one. And jamming on the brakes, maintaining good distance. That looks good. Hit and turn to the outside lane so we can turn right. Tack is rocketing me towards the intersection, so I'll go ahead and take over for that. Lest that become disastrous. And hanging my right, getting up to speed. Come on. And autopilot engaged. And since I have an errand to run, we're not going to do the standard loop where I go back around on the last part. I'm actually going to continue in this direction, so we'll see how it does in this intersection. Good waiting for the car. You didn't have to wait necessarily that long. You can start going again. Come on. But yeah, Autopilot 1 cars, 
um, pretty good. It stopped car detection. Uh, it was very rare that I felt like I had to intervene because it was coming up on a car too fast. With Autopilot 2, I'd say having to intervene is the norm. I have to do that more often than not, taking over because of the red light. So that's something I'm really looking forward to them fixing at some point in time in 2018. Obviously, there have been a lot of articles and tweets going around about new autopilot functionality and features that are currently in testing. That's awesome. I, I love hearing about it. I love getting it even more though. So, you know, until I actually have it in hand, I'm, I'm not really holding my breath because we've been down this road before. <laughs> you know, we know we'll be getting updates in three months, six months definitely, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. So I'd say that's pretty good. Let's continue this loop. I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the highway and we'll do some quick highway testing to finish out this video. Unrelated note, but I had PRK surgery done about uh, six months ago, so I'm going in for my PRK checkup. Very, very happy with PRK surgery. No complaints about that. Totally unrelated to the topic of this video, but random trivia for anybody who's thinking about getting it done. Now, I was gonna say, if we didn't have any cars in front of us, we could even play with the acceleration a little bit, but sadly, no. Maybe I'll pass these guys. It's double lane for a little bit of a distance if I can get around the corner fast enough. But yeah, my testing so far of um, this particular version on highway, very happy with it. Um, you know, but generally I've been pretty happy with highway performance of autopilot uh, 2.0 ever since like about mid last year. You know, ever since they enabled full speed autopilot. Ah, those guys are both lanes. Come on. Ever since they enabled full-speed autopilot and then got a few updates under the belt and then they did the new longitudinal control updates. I mean, highway's been rock solid. I've not had a lot of issues with highway. Same concern on highway that I would have with intersections on local road is if I am approaching stopped traffic while moving at highway speed, eh, there's a little bit of a concern there that I'm probably gonna have to intervene. Aside from that though, the only real issue I have with highway and it's not exactly autopilot but it is related to software updates is the fact that the speed limits are completely off for all of the highways near my house which is really annoying thankfully autopilot doesn't actually cap you to the speed limit as much as it probably should but um yeah it would be i have to turn the speed alert chimes off because i actually did use that feature for a while um but i had to turn them off because it's just wrong everywhere this is a 65 mile an hour zone it has it listed as 55 miles an hour there is a stretch of this road that is 55 miles an hour but it is several miles behind me um i don't know why it's so rampantly inaccurate I'm gonna let this person pass since they want to apparently pass me on the right go on over it's one thing I would love to see Autopilot be able to do at some point. I guess she doesn't really know what she's doing. All right, that would be one thing I'd love to see Autopilot do at some point down in the future is not just read the movement of cars, but also read the car's intention via its signals. Um, most of the time when I take over for Autopilot on the highway, it's because a car would like to come into my lane and I want to give them space. So I'll either take over from the Autopilot or I will instruct the Autopilot to drop speed to create space for the car to allow them to get in. Autopilot can be a bit of a jerk sometimes in terms of letting cars in because if it sees a gap that is beyond the amount of pre-programmed gap that you have set using your slider settings as I'm clicking them here you can barely see them with sun glare um, then it just it, it unfortunately will rock it forward and not let people in which is not awesome uh, but yeah this is good performance and I'm about to lose my camera battery for the instrument cluster so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this recording at this point and say thanks for watching